I'm Pauline Larson and this is Pinky. Hi. And today we're going to talk about following God and, and doing, learning to do what he says and hearing from him. And I think a lot of people want to know, was that God talking to me? I'm not sure. Yeah, sometimes I don't know. You don't always know? No. You want to know better how to hear from God, right? Yeah, sure do. You know, last week you were really scared. Yeah. And someone's going to die. You thought you were going to die, didn't you? You thought you were going to get that coronavirus. Yeah, but I'm not. No, you're not. I've never seen a pink skunk with it, which is kind of cool in a way. Um, we're going to talk today, though, also about some ways that to, five, to know and just how good God is and how much he wants to talk to you, how much he wants you to know what he's trying to tell you and what he has for you so that you can follow the wonderful plan that he has for your life. Everybody, he has a wonderful plan for your life. And he wants you to know. And, and so today that's some of the things that we're going to hear about. So let's do the memory verse first, okay? All right, let's put it up there and let's see. Can you see that? Let me put you up where you can see. Yeah, I can see it. Okay, be careful to obey all the law. Do not turn from it to the right or the left. How do I do that? How would I turn to the right or left? I don't understand. Well, you turn from the right or the left, meaning um, you don't do it. Oh, okay. In other words, you've got to stay on track when he tells you to do something. You don't decide, well, I'd really rather go do this, or I'd rather go do that, or let me do it a different way when you know what he's told you to do. All right, where's that found? Up there. Yeah, that's right. Joshua 1, 7. That's correct. That is correct. All right. Now we're going to talk about the PowerPoint. And I'm going to have you say goodbye. Bye. All right. Now, let me see here. Go ahead and put you back in your place. PowerPoint. Oops. What happened? <laughs> that didn't quite go. <laughs> there. That's better. Follow God always, not just when it's convenient. <clears throat> so that's pretty important. There's times when it's not convenient. And you think, I mean, I've had God tell me to go talk to somebody, and I didn't want to go talk to them. And I thought, I want to go do such and such. And do I have to go do that now? Yeah, he told me to. Well, there was a reason. For one thing, the person wasn't probably going to be there later. But, you know, do what God says when he says it. If you really want to be used by God, you will be obedient to do what he says when he says to do it. It's, you know, it's kind of like this. He tells you things. He knows the whole plan ahead. He knows what's going to happen. You know, when he tells you, timing is important. But it's more than that. I know I've had kids and raised them up. And when I told them to do something, I didn't want them to get around to it when they felt like it. Because delayed obedience is still disobedience. You need to do it when he says. So with that in mind, we're going to go on. And we're going to talk about the four things I need to learn about God. And we go over this, like I said, every time. God loves me. I am so glad he loves me. You know, there's people that don't love me, and I know they should, but they don't, and that's life. And there's people who probably don't love you, and they should, but that's life, and that's their problem, not your problem. But God loves you all the time, and he loves you when you've sinned. That was number two, I have sinned. You know, he, there are people who will love us when everything's going great, and we're doing what they want. But when we don't, oh, then all of a sudden they don't have any use for us anymore. But God loves us. He may not like what we're doing, but he loves us. And what's really cool is he'll help us out of our mess. And he'll help us avoid having those messes in the future. Three, Jesus died for me. And we're coming up to Easter when we think about that terrible price he paid on that cross. And then he went down to hell. And oh my gosh, what a price he paid. I don't think anybody suffered ever as much as he did. And and, you know, he was perfect, and they still came against him. So there's persecution. Persecution is something we're all going to have to deal with. The Bible tells us that. 
And they persecuted Jesus. He was perfect. He didn't do anything wrong. He did not deserve what happened to him. All he did was go about and help people and do good. In fact, in Acts, talks about he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. But, of course, the devil didn't like it because the devil was a defeated foe, and he sure didn't. He wouldn't have crucified Jesus if he knew what that was going to do because he ushered in a wonderful covenant for us. And it was based on his righteousness, not ours. When he died on that cross or that tree, he made a new covenant that he made and can't be broken, but we can have and we can enjoy. In other words, it was based on his righteousness, not ours. Not our right standing with God. It was based on what he did. Now, in order to get the fullness of it, we need to be in right standing with God. And that part is, like we said, we need to obey him and do what he says. Fourthly, though, we must decide to live for him. That's really important to learn to live for him. And <clears throat> that involves our will. No, there are people in hell. There's a real heaven and a real hell. Hell's a terrible place, and it's for eternity. You do not want to go there. But when you die, you're just not going to disappear you're not going to come back as something else, like, you know, there's some religions believe that in reincarnation. No. You have a spirit. You will live forever somewhere, heaven or hell. And it's totally based on whether you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And that's for you to choose. That's where you must decide to live for him. And so he won't force you. He will allow you to go to hell, but that is not his desire. And you do not want to go there. You know, may, people make jokes about it, but it's not funny. And the people who have been there would love not to be there, but they can never leave. So choose Jesus. And at the end of this show, we're going to show you how to do that. All right. Now we're going to talk about in Numbers, I think it's 9 and um, 15, and those verses from 9 to 23 and um, there's verses that talk about the exodus after um, when they had all the plagues and Moses, you know, the Pharaoh um, sent them out and after the parting of the Red Sea and, and they were in the promised land, they were there to um, do their sacrifices and live and there were several million of them and they were out in a hot desert but it, during the day, he led them by a big cloud, which kept them cool. You know, amazing, isn't it? How there was a big cloud. And I'm sure, too, it probably rained and <laughs> provided some water. I know that there was not much water. And I know that they had water out of a rock. And they, they would come to a spring like Elam, and there would be uh, water. And, but I know this. God provided for them. And he led them. And, you know, wouldn't that be nice? There's this big cloud. Show me instantly what to do all the time. And then at night, there was a pillar of fire because it would get very, very cold in the desert, hot in the day, but cold at night. And the, the fire would keep them warm. And so here they were. And here's another one of them with the cloud leading them. And when the cloud would begin to move, that's when they knew they needed to pack up and go because... Um, God was leading them out to, to go on. And they were totally, they knew when they were to go and when they weren't. And some of us would say, boy, I wish I knew sometimes what God really wants me to do. Well, we have his Bible now. We have the Holy Spirit once we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior who comes to live inside of us. We have that inner witness that we know. You know, one of the ways that we know when God is leading us is through his word. We can read a scripture and it just jumps off the page at us. Don't keep reading. Pray about that. That is God's trying to tell you something. Secondly, sometimes we hear him talking to us. And, you know, people say, oh, I hear voices. I need to go. I know I'm going to say, no, I got news. Everybody does. You hear your own voice sometimes. But the thing is, God wants to talk to you. And sometimes he uses circumstances. Sometimes he uses dreams. Sometimes he does other things, too. He uses other people. Sometimes somebody will have a prophetic word for you, and you know it's right, and it witnesses to you. But one of the best ways that he leads us on a daily basis is what I call that inner witness, that kind of feeling of peace. You're led by his peace. When you lose your peace, don't do it. 
And, and God has his ways of leading us so that we know that we know we've heard from him. And you kids can know. You know, it's just like you go to a restaurant and you have a, you know, you have a steak and you go with your parents. Well, the, the same cow that produced the steak for them has produced the steak for you. It's not a junior-sized cow. And it's the same Holy Ghost that lives in us, that lives in us and, and lives in the kids. It's not a junior Holy Ghost. It's the same Holy Spirit. And he wants to talk to you just as much as he does to your parents and to adults. And in fact, sometimes it's easier for him to talk to kids because they don't have all that bad teaching and stuff they have through life that they're young and they can receive something easier, actually, than as an adult lots of times. All right. Now, having said all that, we need to be careful of distractions. You know, there's so many wonderful things out there, video games and iPhones and iPad, different things that we all love our technology. It's just really kind of cool. Now, how many have been to a restaurant? Here's people everywhere are on their phones. You know, here they're with people. They should be talking. Instead, they're on their phones or they're texting. And, you know, people get killed texting while they're driving. I mean, wow. So we need to be aware that as wonderful as our technology is, we need time, quiet time, alone with God. And we can do that sitting in some place quiet. Sometimes put some nice background music. Don't, if you put words on, you'll be thinking about that if the music has words. But just sitting there still. The Bible says, be still and know I'm God. And we need to spend that time. So beware of distractions that will eat your time. You know, I know with video games, it's really easy to play for a long time. And and then, oh my gosh, I got to do my schoolwork. And oh my God, I got to do chores. And you don't have any time for God. Well, God is most important because He's the one who has a plan for your life. And He's the one who will lead and guide you and make sure you're safe, you know. He knows what's coming, He knows the good and the bad. So it's real important that we spend that time with Him. Okay. Now, I got a picture of some kids brushing their teeth. Well, that's pretty cool. I'm sure your parents told you, you need to brush your teeth. And, you know, sometimes kids are funny. They'll, you know, they'll just do a real quick job, just get by with what their parents tell them or maybe forget. But it's like a lot of things. If you don't do it, you may get by with it for a while, but you won't get by with it forever. Here's an example of somebody who doesn't brush their teeth. Ooh, yuck. Terrible. I'm going to go on to the next slide. But when God tells you to do things or people tell you to do it and you don't do it right, there's a price. If you eat junk food and candy all the time, there's a price. There's a lot of adults who are diabetics now because they ate too much sugar. They just went by fast food, got it, and that's what they lived on. And there was a price later on. There's a price to not following God and spending time with Him. You can end up on a detour in life because you married the wrong person. You moved to the wrong city. You did the, whatever it was, it wasn't right. You went out with the wrong people and, or the wrong friends, and it was the wrong time to do it. It's important to spend time with God and get to know Him and find out what He wants you to do or doesn't want you to do. And that comes, don't neglect that. Don't try to make it quick like maybe the kid who's just acting like they're brushing their teeth, but don't bother them figure it doesn't matter. It does matter. It matters a great deal. It could even cost you your life. So make a point of getting, making that quality time alone with God every day. In fact, really should be first thing in the morning. You may have to get up a little earlier. Say, oh, I don't want to get up early. I don't get enough sleep as it is. Well, go to bed a little earlier, but make sure you get your time with God. All right. See, here's a potter. He's working on He's got a wheel and he's working. I don't know about you, but it's kind of fun to play with clay and there's some amazing uh, sculptures and statues and things, but they were all probably made originally from clay, and then they put kind of a, a wax thing that they did to make a mold out of it as a way of doing it. And because a lot of the statues are made that way, and then they able to pour the metal in. But, you know, I think about God. He's the master potter, and we are made out of clay. And he has a plan for your life. And just like you can see where he's holding it and shaping it, He's doing that with you, and you may not see that because you say, well, I don't know what's happening in my life. Nothing seems to work. Well, something's going on, and sometimes we can be resisting God, and God really want, has put us to be still because he's trying to talk to us, and we're so busy. 
we don't have time. So sometimes he'll put us in a place where, okay, and you just need to say, God, you've got my attention. What are you trying to show me? And pay attention because he has a good plan for your life. Just like that potter knows what he wants that pot to look like when he starts working on it. The same thing's true with God. He knows when you were born, he had a plan for your life. And uh, I've said before that there's a, a kind of a calling in your life, that your main call for your life, that God's purpose that he wants to accomplish. And then there's, sometimes there's seasonal things, things that happen during, for a season. And then there is the daily, where God wants to talk to you every day about certain things. And so uh, it's real important that you spend that time with God, and that way you can, um, you can be right on track with him and doing what is right. And at the right place, at the right time, with the right information, the right friends, the right people, that's real important. That's not an accident. That comes from spending time with God and learning how to uh, connect and work with him. Okay, well, we're about ready to go on. We have a story today and another one about Kangaroo Jones. And, you know, we've this series. Kangaroo Jones is from Australia. And, of course, he's a kangaroo. <laughs> and anyway, I don't know how many of you have been down to Australia or some of this may be airing in Australia. But anyway, there were some really bad um, crocodile police and they were kidnapping koalas, kind of like sex traffic, and they were sending them off and it, it was just terrible. They, they wanted to take over Australia and they were really bad, bad dudes. And so um, they were going after the koalas and Kangaroo Jones heard about it, but here they are, here you can see them and they were grabbing the the kangaroo, the koalas were, not kangaroos, they were grabbing the koalas and they were um, taking them and shipping them off and the, the, the koalas were disappearing. It was like, where were they going? And so Kangaroo Jones uh, heard about it and he felt like he was supposed to help do something about this. So he went to the outback. There was this really wise old koala. His name is Ozzy. And so he went to Ozzy and he says, what's happening here? And Ozzy says, well, those crocodile police, they're trying to take over Australia and they're trying to get rid of the koalas and, and they're t sending them off and capturing them. And uh, they're sent off for, you know, to be sex slaves and, and to be tortured. And so um, Kangaroo Jones right away thought he needed to do something to help them stop this. So he says, well, you know, what do we do? And so Ozzy said, I have a film that shows, shows what I'm saying is true. Yeah, I have proof. So he came up with the film. And so uh, Kangaroo Jones sat there and watched the film and thought, oh, my, that's terrible what they're doing. We need to do something here. This is not right. You know, and sometimes God will lay things on our heart. We know things aren't right, and we need to do something to help or intervene. So he set out. He knew that there was a path that they went for the trains went where they took these, these captured koalas. And so he went along those tracks. He knew he had to stay on the, on the track because he was in the outback. And the outback's very treacherous and kind of like the Israelites in the wilderness. You know, you don't want to go off exploring and you might be lost and not be able to find your way back. And so he went off and uh, on the tracks. And sure enough, here was this... Um, a couple of kangaroos, Kelly and Skippy, and their their uh, car broke them down. And they were like, can you help us? You know, we're stranded here. And of course, it was not a good place to be stranded. But he says, well, I'm, I'm headed, you know, I'm looking for these koalas, and um, I guess, but you're going to have to stay on the track. You're going to have to um, do what I tell you to do. You can't go to the left, you can't go to the right, you need to do what I tell you. And they were like, oh, please, please, we'll do whatever you say, you know. <laughs> so reluctantly, he said, well, okay. So we went ahead and he let him join him. And so, because he couldn't get the car going, and so they're heading along the tracks when guess what? There's like this oasis and there's a pond and... Skippy says, oh, I want to go play, I want to go swim and drink some water. And, and her mother, you know, um, Kelly says, yeah, this will be fun. 
And Kangaroo Jones says, no, don't do that. This, is, there's, this could be a trap. We don't want you to stop here. And they were like, no, 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 we'll be fine. And, and he said, I told you the only way you could go with this is if you did what I told you. Well, they didn't. And long come the crocs, it was a trap. And so here they are, they're trapped. And finally, after quite a fight, Kangaroo Jones prevails and they're free. And he tells them, look, don't do that again. Yes, you escaped, but next time you may not be so fortunate. This, this may not go well for you. Oh, no, we'll do what you say. We just don't leave us. Just, we, need, we need to continue on. So he agreed to let them continue. And so here we go. They continue on a ways, and what do you expect happened? Yep, Skippy said, oh, look. And this time, it was like there were tracks like train tracks, and there were koala, what looked like little koala footprints, but they were all fake. They weren't real. And of course, Kangaroo Jones knew that, and he says, no, don't go. But Skippy just ran on ahead. He didn't listen. And you know, there's kids who do not listen. They always do what's wrong. And you know what? They may get by with it for a while, but they won't get by with it forever. They're going to get caught. And what they didn't, what he didn't realize, Skippy didn't realize, is this indeed was a trap. And so he heads out, and he goes, because he follows that track, and all of a sudden he runs into something real slick, and he goes over the cliff. And guess what? There was quicksand, and he was in the quicksand. And that's not a fun way to end up. He knew that if he didn't get out soon, he was going to drown. You know, he was sinking into the quicksand, and he was going to die. Well, <clears throat> I'm not going to say how it ends, but I will say this. God will help us, but we can get ourselves in some bad situations by getting off the track of following God and doing those things that we know are right. And sometimes it can be okay, and sometimes it's not. And we don't like to think about those things. We like everything to end up well. But the truth of the matter is in life, it doesn't. Obey your parents. Follow what God tells you to do. It's real, real important. Now, if you never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you don't know how long you have on this earth. You know, uh, we have all these people that are all worried they're going to die of the coronavirus. And they probably won't. But nevertheless, there are some that will. And do they know Jesus? I would certainly hope so. Because there's a real heaven and there's a real hell. There's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. And you do not want to go to hell. Hell is forever. And then you get put in the lake of fire. I mean, it's terrible. Nobody should go there. And I know people tell people rudely, you know, that you go to hell. And that's wrong. They shouldn't do that. Anyway, I'm going to put something up. I'm going to put it up in Spanish too. And it's not going to go exactly according to my words. But... You can accept Jesus. If you are in the room with somebody and they only speak Spanish, they can read this and accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Isn't that cool? But I'm going to do it in English because that's what I know how to speak. So first of all, I'm going to say that the Bible says that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And in Romans 10, 13, it says, Whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And you're a whosoever. We, both, we all are. And the Bible also says... In Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if we'll believe in our heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, and if we'll confess with our mouth, you've got to say it, that's real important, you can be saved. And the confession is important. You need to speak it out. It's not just enough to think it, you've got to say it. And so we're going to lead you, if you want, in a prayer where you can accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And you can do that now. Um, <clears throat> and you say, well, I've done all kinds of things wrong. Well, God knows that. He forgives you. And I can tell you as a minister of the gospel, after you say this prayer, you are forgiven. People may remember things, but God will not. In his eyes, it's like you've never sinned. Isn't that wonderful? So let's do this together. And if you've done it before, but you've gotten away from God, you can redo it, although you 
just you just rededicate, tell God, I, you know, I want you in my life. So let's say this together. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for sending Jesus to die for me. Jesus, I do believe. I believe it with my heart, and I'm saying it with my mouth. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. I love you, Jesus. Wow, isn't that awesome? You know, once you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then what's the next thing you do? And by the way, if you just did that, we'd love to hear from you. We'd like to send you a gift. And so if you, uh, there'll be at the bottom of the screen, there'll be an address. If you want to write us, we'll send you a gift. And if you need healing in your body, by the way, speaking of the coronavirus, you know, place your hand on the part of your body that you have a problem with and then uh, say, thank you, Jesus, for healing me. And say, by his stripes, which is in, found in Isaiah 53, 5, it says, by his stripes I was healed, or 1 Peter 2, 24. I, I was healed in that one. And God, you will receive healing. And, you know, remember, there is the coronavirus but remember this, that the name of Jesus is more powerful than any disease. Every knee must bow to the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus overcame everything. And you ask God to wash you with the blood of Jesus. And you say, in the name of Jesus, I'm healed. You'll be healed. And, you know, remember when um, to stay in faith, not in fear. And watch and see what God does. We love you, and we love to hear from you, and we're glad if you've just accepted Jesus, and we just say, keep your eyes on Jesus, keep reading the word, pray, get yourself in a good church, and, you know, keep uh, talking to God and see the wonderful life that God has for you. Amen? We love you, and we'll see you next time.